Peter the Great attempted to westernize Russia. He believed that the people would not change unless they were forced, so he used a hand of iron to implement his dreams. Peter the Great brought the Russian Orthodox Church under the control of the state. He brought it under his control because it had almost as much power as him, and for someone who believed in divine right, this was a major problem. He also did this because it was very rich, it refused to be modernized, and it owned vast amounts of land and serfs which could be seen as a rival to the Tsar. Instead of being governed by a patriarch, it came under the control of the Most Holy Synod, which was composed of bishops and lay bureaucrats chosen by the Emperor. Due to his reforms with the Church, monasteries lost territory and were closely regulated, which caused a reduction in the number of nuns and monks in Russia. Peter the Great started the very first newspaper in Russia on December 16, 1702, and the first issue appeared on January 2, 1703. He called it Vidumusti, meaning, literally, the record. He edited it, and most of the time, he wrote it. It mainly contained reports of military victories and diplomatic relations, and it was printed in St. Petersburg. The Vidumusti newspaper is still going to this day. As part of his westernization, Peter the Great changed Russian fashion as well. He forced nobles to wear western clothing or else pay a tax. Men were also forced to be clean shaven or else pay another tax. Gentlemen and merchants paying 100 rubles a year, while commoners had to pay one kopeck a year. Many people, especially the elderly, viewed the Tsar as a tyrant and a pagan. Many old Russians, having shaved their beards off, Save them in order to have them placed in their coffins, fearing they would not be allowed to enter heaven without their beards. Among all of these strange changes, Peter the Great raised the status of women. Before, women did not attend social gatherings, but under new decrees, they were invited to entertainments such as weddings, banquets, dances, etc. At these gatherings, both men and women would mingle in the same hall, just like the Westerners did. During his reign, Peter the Great decided that he would move his capital from Moscow to St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg was built on swamp lands because ships could sail down the Neva into the Baltic Sea and over to Europe. He also wanted St. Petersburg in this location because he was interested in Western culture and it would be his window to Europe. Every year, 30,000 serfs were forced to leave home and work on building St. Petersburg in capital construction gangs. They worked in horrible conditions. The work regimen was strict and the living conditions were deplorable. Serfs died of cold, hunger, disease, or, if they were completely unlucky, they were eaten by wolves. 25,000 to 100,000 people lost their lives building this gorgeous city. Many never returned home were buried where they fell. Peter the Great created a massive army and navy. The army was enlarged and made into a professional unit. Peter the Great created the very first Russian navy and it became massive with 48 ships of the line and 800 galleys. 
His military became a force to be reckoned with, and Peter the Great set out to conquer. He would go on to crush his opponents, having games against the Ottomans in the south and conquering much of Sweden's lands. Peter the Great ruled Russia from 1682 to 1725. By the time of his death in 1725, Peter the Great had turned Russia into a major world power and launched it towards what it is today. He also grew Russia into a massive empire, which you can see from this map. All the light orange and slightly darker orange areas are lands gained by Peter the Great. Sadly, even this brilliant giant of a man could not surmount death. He succumbed to the Grim Reaper, as we all must one day when gangrene in his bladder took him away at the age of 52 years old. Aquasis Yuru Разрезался, разрезался,